that should be live yet. Hi everyone. I think I went live a little bit earlier than I planned to, so you probably enjoyed that if you were watching. Uh, <laughs> today's Thursday. It's a beautiful day outside and definitely feels like summer here in Illinois. Um, the world is, I don't know, every day it gets a little crazier, right? <clears throat> Why would I expect it to be any other way? It's, I think, if we keep our eyes open, we always see that. It is just doing its own thing. And we as individuals are doing our thing and it's often out of sync with what everybody else or uh, lots of other people are doing. So now we're just, I think we're seeing that more up close and personally. Good news this morning that made my heart feel happier that the Supreme Court has upheld the sanction for DACA young people. So those are the children of immigrants who were brought here when they were probably babies and um, are in college or into professions. And the uh, head of the country wanted to send those people back. And they had been promised by previous administrations that they would be able to become citizens and they would be able to stay in school. And they're, they definitely uh, include a very uh, successful part of the, the uh, next generation. So it, there are a lot of people who just lived in fear all the time with what could happen because these are people who have really never lived in another country other than America. and by no decision of their own, not from their own uh, choice, this is where they grew up and this is the place they call home. So I'm so happy to see that, that the Supreme Court is, uh, in my opinion, and I think as a humanitarian choice, uh, it was a wonderful, wonderful decision and we're keeping Hopefully we can keep a lot of wonderful people in our country and let them help Let them help make it uh, As good as it can be so That was my good news for today and then other headlines. I looked at but didn't even get into <clears throat> Are about how Americans are in the still in the middle of a catastrophe and uh, Not doing anything about it like we've uh, Americans have, <clears throat> we're too impatient. We wanted everything to be done and open and there are so many people doing that, that the rest of us who are trying to be really careful are just standing back. Like what's different about today than uh, three weeks ago? So keep doing what you think is, is right and safe. Remember if your daily intentions are renunciation, which is letting go of what we no longer need. And that can be in our, our behaviors, our ideas, our thoughts, our actions, just not, uh, not wanting to grab everything in sight is where it begins, is just being okay with what we have without needing more, without, uh, and, and letting things become more simple in our lives which the pandemic has helped a lot of us do. But our daily intention should be our daily resolve. I like that word resolve better because there's more weight behind it. <clears throat> Renunciation and loving kindness and harmlessness. And that's to ourselves and to all others. So I think when we're not wearing masks in public and we're not social distancing, at least for us here in this area, and we're pretty connected to 
the Chicago area where it was really a hot spot. Um, in this area, that's being safe, that's being harmless to others, and that's also having loving kindness towards ourselves and to others. Um, so take care, let your daily resolve, your daily intention include those three things and everything will be okay because we can always very quickly come back to those and think, what am I trying to be today? Who am I? What am I trying to do? What am I trying to be? And that can help. So good news and bad news that's happening all the time. So we, we can't expect it to be any different. Uh, we can hope, we can wish, we can do our parts to make everything better. And that's good to take that action that's for the good of other beings. But we have to let go of any expectations that that goal is going to be reached anytime soon. So whatever you put your efforts into to help make the world a better place, do it with those same intentions. Do no harm. Do it from love, not from anger. And always keep things as simple as, as they can be. And uh, let go of the things that may be cause you to be more angry or, for, or cause you to be uh, tight in a knot all the time because we're trying to loosen those knots, right? Okay, before we sit today, I have some a few questions that people have asked and I wanted to share those with you because I think they're generally questions that people, uh, people, a lot of people ask. The Buddha, here's the first one, I have two. The Buddha talked about taking refuge in the Sangha, our community of noble friends. What, if anything, did he have to say about new Buddhists who already have a group of friends and family who aren't interested in following the Eightfold Path, who aren't interested in changing their comma for the better? <clears throat> How, if at all, <coughs> excuse me, it's an allergy day. How, if at all, should our relationships with these people change? <coughs> I hope you can I hope you can hear me. I just suddenly lost my voice. <clears throat> so what did the Buddha have to say about how new Buddhists who already have that group of people that, 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 who are their friends, who are their family, <clears throat> um, who aren't interested in changing their comma? Well, <clears throat> this is a question a lot of people ask. And I think, first of all, it's important, I think, to temper our, <coughs> how excited we get when we've discovered the Buddhist teachings and we relate to them personally and we may have studied the teachings before we even meet people in a, in a group and it's always so, it's always so wonderful to find a group of like-minded people, on the surface like-minded, right? and it's exciting and we want to tell everybody about it. And <clears throat> from my own personal experience, I say be careful about that because a lot of times in our eagerness, we want to uh, tell everybody about it and assume they'll feel about it the same way we do. <clears throat> and I think a lot of people are resentful that causes them to become defensive because most people live with a set of principles that they feel pretty good about. And they may have no, they may be completely secular and not have any um, spiritual interest, but they, they always, most of the time people will say, well, I have my own values, my own principles. I don't need different ones, thank you very much. So we can be too zealous and we can be too sure of how much somebody else needs what, what, what we've found that re, we react to very positively. So 
um, back off, keep, keep it, develop your practice on your own. And I promise you that what will happen is the people close to you and the people that are your friends will just notice a difference in you. <clears throat> and they will, they will become interested in it because they see it change you, the person you are. They see, they see your uh, mental defilements is sort of dissolving. And they'll, they'll think, what, what are you doing differently? There's something different about you. And then you can just, you can mention, be, be careful about how you talk about it because, again, you don't want people to become defensive or feel like you're trying to convert them because it, with Buddhism, there's nothing to convert anybody to. We're just students of the teachings of the Buddha. He was a great teacher. And if people ask you, it's better to let them ask you. And uh, the Buddha always said, that we can't just teach someone without their permission. So someone has to ask in, in his tradition and in his day, someone has to ask for a teaching three times. So a lot of what the Buddha did was when those, those correct requests had been put out, or when the monks asked him to talk, that's when he would speak to them. And a, a lot of his teaching was in people just seeing how he was, how he, how he walked, and how uh, calm he was, and how he dealt with people. That it was just his behavior that drew people. They talk about seeing him, and he was, he was a model. He was, he was a handsome man when he was young. We hear, we've heard stories about that. I, I, I know as he aged, he aged like anyone would do, but probably was a handsome man as he got older. But he, 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 was, he walked upright and he walked calmly and carried himself well. And um, he was also gentle and kind. He certainly wasn't uh, weak. He, he wasn't weak in the way he would talk to someone or respond to someone. It wasn't from weakness, but it was from pure clarity and he had he knew he could see and kind of know where someone was coming from and uh, we would say today that was from really good uh, observation of people and working with people and understanding himself so well and <clears throat> and a lot of people would say he had some special qualities that were well developed in him So when, when someone did come to him and, and ask a question, he might know that they weren't ready for the answer. And so he might not say anything. He might not answer their question. So if you have friends, unless, you're, unless, you're, uh, unless with those friends you've been doing really unwholesome, unskillful things with them, don't give up your friends. I think it will become clear over time if there are relationships that it feels better for you to uh, let go of, or if there are people that are doing things that are so uh, discordant with, with how you enjoy spending your time, for example. That might just gradually happen, and uh, that's, that's probably you'll know when you need to do that. But otherwise, if there's value in the relationship and, you've, and you feel like uh, you, you can be a good example to people, I mean, we change people and affect people much more than we realize. So don't be uh, dogmatic and don't be too zealous and uh, let people just see you growing and just becoming a better person, a better who you are. Be kinder, be a better listener, be careful with the things you say, be more mindful. And if you become more mindful, you're going to see things. Work on mindfulness first. You'll be observing and attentive and using, using wisdom 
and a good comprehension of the things that you see around you and that you see in your life. And I think, I think there are people that we don't want to give up on because there are family members or loved ones that we've uh, made commitments to. So I think with those people, we can, uh, we can be kind and loving and not put ourselves in harm's way, not put ourselves in situations that we know we'll be very uncomfortable in. And if that means uh, not being in the presence of someone who you know is going to be maybe baiting you or uh, uh, is just using behavior that you can't be around, you don't have to make a big deal of it, but you can uh, back away more silently, maybe you can not go to those situations where that person's going to be around, or you can stay for a little bit and then leave, and uh, leave because you have something else you have to get to, or you have to take care of someone else, and try not to challenge that person. Although that time may come, it's good to read some of the Buddha suttas, how he, how he acts when angry people confronted him, and I think especially for someone who's new to the teachings, keep studying, keep reading, try to, try to keep your practice going, and uh, be patient. Be patient and be kind. And whenever you do have any kind of confrontation, do it from love and not anger, and be as harmless as you can be uh, in everything you say if you, ha if you find that your former friends and uh, people that you were with a lot if they be if they feel if you feel uncomfortable with them <clears throat> maybe gradually you can <coughs> you'll see more clearly what you what direction you need to do to go in Ooh. okay that's enough for the question and answers today but I think we should just sit now and I'll do a little bit of guiding I'm so croaky I'm so sorry I wasn't like this. Well, 20 minutes ago I wasn't talking to anybody either, so <laughs> I'm, I'm healthy, I'm fine. This is just allergy, seasonal allergy, okay? So, and remember, no matter how long we, you've been a Buddhist or how long you've been a monastic, we all have difficult people in our lives, and sometimes those difficult people are, are the ones we we love and our family members. And so we're always working with this. It, it, uh, it changes over time, but we're always learning, trying to work on being more patient and loving. And um, we, don't wanna, we don't wanna break ties that are important to us. We want to work with them and make peace with, with them as much as we can. Okay, so let's sit. <clears throat> Close your eyes and relax your body. And be with your breath. Watch your breath. When I say be with your breath, it's nothing, that's nothing mystical or um, elaborate. I mean, we're breathing anyway. So when we're sitting, we are observing <coughs> our breath. It's already there. <coughs> we have been working on making sure breath is getting in, uh, allowing our belly to rise and fall. And that's just because we're practicing. We're trying to keep our respiratory system open and clear during the pandemic, it's very important. So we can access our breath by just putting our hands on our belly and watching us, watching your abdomen rise when you inhale and contract a little when you exhale. And 
And we can all do that even if your focus of attention is around your nostrils, which is how we typically train in, in our particular tradition. They're both fine. And let, let the attention that you're, you have be focused on your breath. Not on your thoughts, not on the things your senses are picking up on. With each inhale, you can be aware of your surroundings. Breathe in everything around you. The world, the beautiful day. And as you breathe out, you can relax and be calm with what is. Let everything else go. I'll be right back. With each exhale, feel your shoulders rise and fall. Exhale, let your shoulders drop. back, stay with your breath, wherever your mind is taking you off to. Let it go for now. Come back to your breath.
relax, keep relaxing. Be aware of each breath you take. Notice if it's a deep breath, or maybe it's shallow. It, put, it changes all the time, so you can notice each breath Notice if your inhale is longer than your exhale, or is your exhale longer? everything go. Just feel your problems, your worries, your thoughts, your desires, your plans. <clears throat> Just let all of that go for a few more minutes. If you're ready and if you want to uh, keep your schedule for the day and can't continue, you can open your eyes. If you can keep sleep, keep sleeping. If you're if you're listening to me trying to go to sleep, I hope you're you can keep sleeping. But uh, if you can sit a little longer, just continue, and uh, I'll see you tomorrow. And uh, my apologies for my. Uh, I have to I might have to keep a cough drop in my mouth tomorrow. We'll see how that goes. Okay, thank you so much for being with me, sitting with me and and for helping me so much with my practice. You you can't imagine how how good it makes me feel. Okay, thanks. <laughs>